Hey friends, today I want to talk about how to practice loving kindness or metta while dancing. This is probably my personal favorite way to practice metta or loving kindness, so I really like to share it through the world with the world by doing metta dance parties. I run these online and in person when I can. Of course, that's been difficult in COVID times, but uh, yeah, dance parties online or in person are a really wonderful way to practice and spread loving kindness. Um, I also do quite a bit of this on my own. I'll just get my headphones on and go out for a walk and find a park and dance and do loving kindness. And that's probably not only my favorite way to practice loving kindness, but honestly, my most favorite practice of all right now. Um, it's just so enjoyable. I mean, music is fun. Dancing is fun. Loving kindness is fun. It feels good. It's enjoyable. And, uh, I just love doing it so much. So that's why I'm really passionate about sharing it with the world. I think for me, um, you know, there are so many years in my own meditation practice where <clears throat> it just wasn't that enjoyable. I was forcing myself to meditate because I thought that it was a good thing to do. I thought it would help me. And of course it did in the long term, but it wasn't fun and it was not enjoyable and it was even physically painful. And so to find a form of meditation that's not only not painful, but fun and feels good in the body and feels good emotionally and even helps other people because you're more kind and, you know, act in kinder, better ways towards others. It's just like, that is great. That's the good stuff. Um, you know, it even sounds good because there's great music. So, you know, it even has me wondering, uh, like, why this isn't more commonly practiced. Um, someone did point out to me recently that, of course, one of the, um, like, in, in the Buddhist tradition, which is where metta or loving kindness comes from, uh, there's different ethical stipulations in uh, Theravadan Buddhism, which is the oldest extant form of Buddhism, and, uh, you know, existing, still running. There are older forms that aren't still existing, but Theravadan Buddhism is the most, uh, is the oldest longest running form of Buddhism. And um, there's different ethical precepts that you follow in Theravadan Buddhism. And uh, there's different formulations of these. The most broadest one is the five ethical precepts, but some people also take on uh, the eight precepts. And one of the eight precepts is not to dance or listen to music. And so, uh, you know, and there's reasons for that. You can go and read sutras about that. And it makes sense within the Theravadan Buddhist frame that you wouldn't want to listen to music. Certainly a lot of contemplative traditions have talked about the power of music, and of course it can be very beneficial, you know, things like chanting and so on, but there's also some harm that can be done spiritually through music. Um, so there's kind of a risk, and uh, you know, even Plato, who I read in school, talked about this, of like, oh, different heat tones can be like bad for you spiritually and whatnot. So. Uh, this is something I've been aware of for some time. Um, also, Edward Salim Michael that I really liked talks about this as well. But for me, in my own experience, uh, listening to music is just so joyful and such a wonderful opportunity to practice loving kindness that it just seems like the trade-offs are really good. And um, it's just really joyful to practice loving kindness through music. So uh, anyway, I think that that sort of historically that Buddhism some, if you take the eight precepts, you don't do dancing and music might be part of why Buddhist tradition hasn't picked up on this. But in the contemporary world where music is so prevalent and, uh, you know, there's so much wonderful music out there, um, it makes sense to me that that goes really well with uh, loving kindness practice, that that's, that's such a good way to share it and to practice it ourselves and to share it with other people. And, and of course, I think... Um, in my experience, when you do loving kindness with other people, it's 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 just really amplified socially. Like you can bring up your loving kindness to a certain level on your own, but then when you're doing it with other people who are also practicing it, it just goes through the roof. So I don't know. Um, the meta dance parties that I've run so far have been really good, but I look forward to going to one at some point where, uh, how to put it, it's almost as if I'm entering a room of bodhisattvas and you know the, these Buddhist saints who are who are just uh, dedicating their lives to being of service, to helping others, and their hearts are just radiating loving kindness, and everyone in the room is doing it, and just totally amplifies any loving kindness that anyone is feeling. And that flavor is already there with the dance parties I've run, but I think as this becomes more common, it will just get better and better and better and better. And also, hopefully, the music gets better and better for it. This is something I've talked about 
elsewhere, but a lot of the existing electronic music that exists like isn't really designed for loving kindness. And when they talk about love, it's more romantic love and so on. Or the vibes are, you know, mellow or, or dark or somber or something, which I love. I absolutely love that music and it's not perfect really for loving kindness. Um, I want something, you know, bright and happy and enlivening in that way. So anyway, that's a little bit about practicing loving kindness with um, dance and electronic music, how to actually do it, how to actually do it. So hopefully if you're watching this video, you already have a loving kindness practice. And so you're familiar with it. If you're not, I have lots of materials about this. I have guided meditations. I have a book, you know, you have, we have weekly events that you can come to. So we'd love to have you there run events online periodically. There's of course other people that teach loving kindness. You don't have to learn it from me. But this video is sort of going to assume that you already have an existing love and kindness practice, and we'll just explain how to do that. So, uh, let's see. I'd say there's there's sort of four different ways to do it that I'll mention in this video. Um, the first is you could just enjoy dancing. You could just enjoy dancing. It's fun to dance. It's fun to listen to music. It's fun to be at a party. If it's at a dance party that you're at, you can just enjoy that. Just do your thing and not really try to do anything special just enjoy it. That is already a form of loving kindness. Just having a good time, enjoying yourself. That's, that's in the way that I see it, a form of loving kindness. I think I, do, I like to define it very broadly as any love or any joy or any happy feelings whatsoever. And that's, that's a positive, beneficial, wholesome experience. So just enjoy yourself. And that's pretty relatively simple and easy, straightforward. Another thing that is simple, but may, may or may not be easy, is to feel loving kindness while you dance and listen to the music. If you have a solid metta practice, hopefully you've come to the point where you can feel loving kindness in your heart, bring up those feelings, and even maintain them, right? You bring up the feeling and you maintain it stably. If you can do that at a dance party while listening to music, that's the good stuff. That's my main practice, really, with loving kindness, is bringing up that feeling and sustaining it. And so I just do that while I'm dancing. I just do that at the dance party. Can I maintain that feeling of love? Can I maintain that feeling and sense of goodwill towards others while I'm dancing? That's, that's a simple but may or may not be an easy form of practice of loving kindness while dancing. And, and the reason it might not be easy is, is twofold. One, it might be hard to bring up those feelings. It might be hard to access a feeling of loving kindness. And that's something that you can do through formal practice is kind of work with that and learn how to bring up those feelings. And then second, even if you can bring up those feelings with relative ease, it might be hard to maintain them, to stabilize them. And that's basically a concentration practice, right? Can you stably maintain those feelings? Um, instead of, say, following the breath or maintaining a body scan, you are maintaining a feeling and access to a feeling that you have generated. So that could be difficult, but if you have the ability to bring up the feelings, if you have the ability to concentrate and sustain them, then that's a wonderful way to do metta while dancing. Um, that can be supported in the party environment because other people are also doing the metta practice while dancing. And the whole context ideally is set up to help you do that. So if you're at one of these metta dance parties that I'm running, or maybe someone else will run a metta dance party one day, then you can just remember because other people are doing it because the music is reminding you, oh yeah, I'm here to feel the metta, I'm here to spread the metta. Um, and then that way it can be easier to concentrate and return to the feelings of metta. Uh, yeah, so that's the second way, feeling the feelings. The third way would be to sort of use verbal phrases in your mind to uh, wish others well. So you could just say, may you be happy, or I love you, you know, using the same phrase over and over again. Or you can have custom phrases for different people in your life or different people at the dance party. I hope you're having a great time. Oh, wow, I love the way you're dancing. Or, oh man, I hope my, my parents are happy right now. Or whatever else, sort of custom phrases that aren't repeated over and over again, but are spontaneously generated. Um, same as with the method practice. Normally, either saying the same phrase over and over again, or, uh, custom generating different phrases. Uh, so you can kind of have a verbal cognitive 
way of doing the metta then. And that, that can be good if the feelings aren't necessarily available, which might be hard either because you just have a hard time accessing those feelings or because you're dancing and it might be hard to sustain them. So just using phrases, I love you, I love you, I love you, um, can be a way to do the metta while dancing. You can also use images if you like. So of course I love, as you may know, these laser beams, right? Just imagining laser beams shooting out of my hands and <laughs> sending metta from my heart to other people, spreading through the whole world. You know, you can visualize it in any way that you like. I like these laser beams shooting out of my hands. That works for me, that brings me to life, that brings me joy. But you can visualize anything that you want that gives you that sense of love and care for others. Uh, so that's totally valid. Um, and that also brings us actually to a fifth one, which is to, to let the metta move you in your body to manifest in the way that you dance, to express that physically, kinesthetically with the dancing, right? To dance the metta, to show that with the way you move your body. So not just being impacted by the rhythm of the song, but also like, how can I dance in a way that's loving, that's in accordance with this kindness, that's in accordance with this goodwill for self and others? What is it like to dance with this love in my body? Um, and I would really suggest bringing that flavor regardless of how you do it, what the other methods are. If you find that you feel that love or you're connected to that sense of goodwill, then can you let that shape the dancing, inform the dancing, move your body? But that's a fifth way to practice, right? So just to review them again, you can enjoy yourself while dancing. You can feel the metta while dancing. You can use mental talk, auditory thinking to intend good thoughts for yourself and others. You can use visual images to intend good things for yourself and others. And of course, you can let the metta, the goodwill, the feelings move your body, express that love through your body. So those are five ways to practice metta while dancing. There might be other ways. Let me know if you have another way of doing it. But those are the ways that I know about right now that seem like worth sharing. And um, in general, I've just found it to be such a delightful way to practice metta, to, you know, listen to really good music, to dance, to share it with other people, and to practice the metta on the dance floor. And I really, again, hope that you enjoy it as well, but that this spreads more and more so that more people know that this is a totally valid way to practice metta and more people do it. And again, I, I hope that one day uh, I go to one of these dance parties and it's just, uh, you walk in and you know, yeah, these people are really loving. They're really kind. They're feeling it in their bodies. Everyone's practicing it. And it's just like a love explosion coming out of the room. I know when I have connected to that with other people that are loving, it just feels so good and you can really feel it in your body and you can tell it when you look at these people and I want that to spread more and more. Just go into a room that's like a rave, but you know, everyone there is just blasting love out of their heart through the whole universe. And I hope to attend many such parties in my life and bring that about. So do take up this practice. Let me know how you find it and share it with others. Run one of these parties or attend one of them. Uh, share it with the world, spread, spread that love. So thanks for watching and enjoy.